Namaste, soul family. Welcome to this pick a card reading in honor of the transit for Venus in Sagittarius. This is occurring October 17th to November 11th, 2024. So Venus is connected to the heart chakra, to our heart's desires. So this pick a card, I tried and ask and ask, what is the question? And it was very simple. It was messages from the heart messages this it seems that it's something that is when i felt this alignment some of you you know i'm doing the cosmic alignment energy sessions this transit occurred at the same time that we had this full moon in aries just a few hours later okay and it seemed that in terms of angles where venus enters at the same time that uh, we have this full moon effect. The degrees connecting Venus to the moon are going to be 144 degrees. Some of you, you know this number. It's quite a powerful number in terms of resonance, in terms of bringing heaven on earth, having this purpose, this mission. So when I was trying to get a sense of what those messages were, it was really hard to distinct because it was feeling as this new space for certain messages was not created before. So it was really hard for me to pinpoint what was blooming, what was given the space to seed and let bloom this new expression. Some of you, if you don't know, this uh, type of angle, 144 degrees, is called a biquantile. And biquantiles, even though they are a minor astrology aspect, recently my higher self and my higher guidance um, explained to me that we have a tendency to look at some of the very harmonious or very not harmonious aspect in astrology, but that those particular lesser um, type of geometry were actually potentials for our superpowers, for something that we did not rehearse before to be born in this lifetime. So when I looked at my personal by quantiles and quantiles, so 72 degrees or 144 degrees, I was shocked how those were exactly uh, things that I saw were not easy for me to master, but that I really enjoyed to give my attention in this lifetime, to require me to get myself out there, out of my comfort zone, okay? So I really feel that those messages for this picker card, they're from your heart because there is probably something that is emerging, that is emerging from all your inner work, that is rising within you. Some of you, you know I do those illustrations of those reels. And here with this activation of Venus in Sagittarius, there's a rise from your own sacred union, from your own awakening, from you transforming. And yes, there's certain things that you already have learned in past lives and things that you've already experienced and things you're aspiring to experience. But there's all in the between certain little talents and um, things that your heart will call you to learn because it's going to give you certain assets, I'm hearing, that maybe you didn't realize, but that's going to help you achieve in greater ways the enjoyment of your authentic embodiment. So again, I was not given any... <laughs> any guidance about those messages. I just know their, their heart's desires that are born from the space that has been created through this activation with this full moon in Aries because it's occurring the same day as the full moon. But again, it's, it's, I'm, I'm ready for <laughs> for anything and everything here okay so we're going to pick the card as far as the piles 
And it's interesting because those cards that I'm using here, they're my first deck that I purchased for working with the moon cycle. So I was like, oh, we're going back <laughs> into the basics here. Uh, and I felt the call for this energy here. So let's look at the three piles for those messages. Okay. All right, and I heard while I was saying three, no, Audrey, it's going to be four. And it is four. <laughs> okay, okay. The unexpected. I told you, I, I really, I was like, I spent almost like 20 minutes meditating on this. And it was like, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it because it's really unknown. And it's going to be a uh, very different messages here so let's here start with pile number one. Oh, you want to do that first let's first attribute also those little zodiac signs so i strongly suggest you look at your venus placement my dear ones know your placement for your planets in your natal chart okay all right all right So we're going to, before you get influenced by the cards, because I know you're out there, okay? We're going to look at the zodiac sign. Try to really stick to your decision, okay? I don't know why I'm saying this, but try to stick to the decision of your Venus natal placement. We have Pile 1, Leo, Virgo, and Sagittarius. So Pile number 1. Then we have... Pile number two, Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. What? <laughs> this is all water. Wow. Okay. All right. Then pile number three, we have Aquarius. We have Aries. And we have Capricorn. And last pile number four, we have Gemini. Taurus and Libra. Okay, so those are the piles of zodiac signs. Let's see if you can stick to it <laughs> and not be influenced. Pile number one, your card is ooh, adjacent possibilities. Okay, pile number two, we have the walking away. Okay. Pile number three, we have the door to personal healing and happiness. And pile number four, we have the deceit. And I guess, you know, some of those cards, you could be just attracted to more of the words and, oh, let me choose something, <laughs> you know, easy. But remember there is a lot of space that is created for this full moon so try to see uh, what Venus connected to the heart chakra what this planet this master teacher of the law of attraction uh, to become more magnetic has to teach you okay so I will see you there for your messages hi pile number one you picked hopefully according to your Venus placement but again you know, it's just an invitation, but it seems that it was important uh, guidance for everyone. You chose placement for Leo, Virgo, or Sagittarius, and we have adjacent possibilities. So messages from your heart, from your heart chakra. What are those messages? So I have no idea, you guys, how this is going to go, um, but I'm trusting the process. I have to tell you, those messages did not, they, they seem to be very different. Um, but it is, uh, from everything I've gathered with working with those planets and doing the cosmic alignments and the session, uh, Sagittarius is connected to the pericardium, which creates more space. So when we did the energy session, some of you may have already done this. And if you're interested, you'll see the link below. Um, it just created some space that felt very new, a new space for expansion, new space for creating something, okay, uh, something new, and that's going to be very different. So let's see what we have. Ooh, 
there we go for you we have the negotiator with mercury mm. okay this is under this finger here and says good speaking and mediation skills understands human nature good at buying selling and making deals persuasive and diplomatic okay all right messages from your heart for pile number one And then we have, ooh, the door to romance. And the first chakra with Archangel Michael. You know, it's so interesting because Venus is connected to Taurus and Libra. So second house is seventh house. And I felt that some messages, that's why I spent literally 20 minutes trying to go back and forth. Some messages I could see were related to relationships. So with a Venus in those placements, okay, it seems that there are some doors that were closing, that are closing, and but that means that new doors are opening. New doors for more loving opportunities and literally things that you will manifest. Um, I feel that some of you, if you're looking for romance, if you're looking for love, if you're looking for relationships, focus in particular to, re to one particular skill, I would say, is a good communication. Okay, some of you, I feel... Um, the dating scene, I feel like, you know, really spending the time to communicate, to see where, uh, what has gone through each other's life, where you, you come from. And what I mean by come from is not so much like, you know, where were you born, even though obviously <laughs> you're going to learn those things. Uh, but it's more like, what has your soul already experienced? It seems that there is a rush of new opportunities through people. So that could be if you're looking for jobs, okay? That could be also something that could be related to communication, to marketing, uh, diplomacy. A lot of people, I feel a lot of people for this pile, okay? And now it makes a lot of sense for everything that I was feeling because I was like, what the heck are those messages? So for you, pile number one, there is a lot of new loving, supportive opportunities that are coming with this transit. Venus in Sagittarius is creating more space for greater communication, greater dynamics in relationships, in collaborations to be anchored, to be manifested. If that's something that you've been wanting, this is definitely coming your way, okay? So let's ask some questions here, okay? So what can we know about those opportunities, relationships? Can we get more details about those people coming for pile number one, whether it is job-related or um, romance? Can we get more details? All right, we have the nine of wands. This is interesting because this is my card that symbolizes a little bit the Chiron wounded healer and the full moon that is occurring at the same time. So some of you, you might want to review the picker card. Remember who you are for the full moon in Aries. I will put the link down below because that's that seems to be important. Uh, your messages connected to your Chiron wound is going to help you who you are. And I feel that there is a vibrational resonance that you're sending out. People that have healed their wound, that are maybe some of you attracting soul tribes. It feels like people that are going to see you for the work that you've done, you know, that are going to appreciate the work that you've done on yourself, for yourself, for self-growth, 
it really feels that it's the type of new possibilities that are being created through this transit. Oof, look at this, Ten of Pentacles. Abundance. And it, I'm not surprised. It feels like there's a lot that is coming. A pile number one, you have no idea how much relief I'm feeling to see this in the cards because there was just so much that I could tap into. I was like very uh, curious about it. Then we have the five of wands. And then we have the hanged man. Mm. with those cards my dear pile number one what i feel that your heart wants to convey to you is that through this transit there's a lot of different possibilities that are coming your way some are going to be resonant and vibrating to the version of you that has transcended integrated learn a lot about themselves, their potential, as transcended uh, some of the uh, limited mindset about what they're capable of um, achieving, um, removing themselves from drama, removing themselves from, um, you know, gossip, any lower negative vibration, a lot of decluttering, but you will also, there's a potential for you to also attract some of the old pattern of attraction, relationships, or even jobs or opportunities as an energy test. Because here, this energy, the hangman, is Neptune, okay? Neptune right now is ending those soul karmic contracts, that means in those patterns, the universe has its way of testing us by representing the same patterns of dynamic of relationships or the same, you know, uh, similar energy lessons for us to claim that, that we are integrated the lessons by saying no or removing ourselves or saying yes to the things that we used to say no to. Okay, so there's some great soul mastery that is coming for you. And I really feel that you're going to get it, that, that you are at a level where you're remembering what you deserve. You're remembering uh, what type of environment you're wanting. I feel here, I don't know why, but I'm feeling like, oh my God, I was going to say 10th house energy. And I kid you not, if you look a little bit here, I have my little dice, okay? And this is on the 10th house, okay? It's on the 10th house. It's on the north node. Oh, actually, it's the south node, but I don't know why. I wanted the south. Okay, that's interesting because north node is where you would want to go. It would be here. But here is south and where you come from, okay? And Virgo, work. Okay, I, I didn't even have to roll. It was on the side. I guess those dice might <laughs> want to come forward for this. But I feel like the old type of attraction in your workspace or in your relationships, people you network with, there might have been in the past a lot of gossip, a lot of drama, a lot of things that just were subconsciously or consciously just creating limitations. And your heart is saying, Dare to say no. Dare to say no when those old patterns show up and dare uh, to dream bigger and dream towards what you know you deserve. Communicate with the universe. Communicate and claim. I claim new loving opportunities in love, in partnerships, in work relationships, in collaborations to be granted to me now. I don't know why I feel like, like, um, like find a sentence, something, an affirmation and the universe is receiving because it wants at this time, your heart wants you 
wants to hear that from you with the communication. It wants to hear you say what you truly want. It wants you to say no when you mean no. No more people pleasing. No more locking yourself or limiting yourself like you might have in the past. And maybe you didn't realize, but I feel like some of you, um, you might have, because you were playing small and trying to shy away and dim your light, you would attract a lot of energy vampires and people that would take advantage of this, okay? But that's what your heart wants you to hear. Pa number one, I really feel it strongly. So once pile number one claims, claims to the universe, they are ready for those loving relationships, opportunities, what can they expect? Whoa. Queen of Pentacles. You can expect to have it all. You can expect to have all that you claimed. This is powerful. This is really powerful. Uh, Again, the heart chakra emanates an a magnetic field that is at least 5,000 times more powerful than the electric magnetic field of your brain. Notice. So imagine when you're wanting to manifest something that feels good to your heart and you use your mind to put those two together. Everything is possible. Do you get it? So some of you, that's, that's something that is really important at this time is to claim your desires. And that's what Venus in Sagittarius wants you to make the space for. This is an important message. This is a transit for some of you that picked this because of those placement. It's a time where you're, you're awakening inside of yourself those desires and it's saying just ask and you shall receive beautiful messages for you my dear pile number one i'm sending you many blessings much love and light please remember to like those videos it supports the channel to grow and if you need support in terms of cosmic alignment energy session we do breath work i teach you some acupressure point to let those flow especially here with sagittarius we're working with the pericardium there was so much hand chakra activation in that session this rebalanced the scales of giving and receiving so if that's something that interests you, you can see the link down below. I'm sending you many blessings once again, and I will see you soon. Namaste. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your messages from your heart. Okay, so we have the walking away card. And interestingly, all the zodiac signs here are water placement. Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. And I highly suggest that Venus placement, especially because of the specific angle, the 144 degrees that Venus is creating with the moon for this full moon activation, which is occurring at the same time. There's a lot of messages that are coming forward and um, they're really emanating from the space that your heart is going to be achieving through this transit okay so here there's something that is shifting there's something that is fading something you're walking away from something you're just done with just from this energy i can strongly feel it for you my dear and i can say here my water venus <laughs> okay um let's see what cards do you have so what are the messages Ooh, outstanding stars what is that? The leader. Whoa. The Jupiter star. So this is the Jupiter energy line finger. Okay. And Jupiter is the wheel of fortune. Jupiter is expansion. Jupiter is fortune. And here we have outstanding stars. Okay. It's about exerting influence and authority. It provides direction. It has an impact and is powerful in the world, the leader. So 
I feel as some of you already there's some type of leadership. Maybe some of you, you will have to walk away from a job, a position, um, because you deserve better. Or there's certain leadership or there's something you want to create. And that's what your heart wants you to do. There's something better. There's something greater where you'll be in charge. I think that you have certain skills here. Pile number two uh, of leadership. That seems to be obvious to the universe, to this Venus in Sagittarius. Maybe not yet to you. Or maybe there were some fears uh, to take that leap of faith. I can feel that. Um... But now the universe is aligning the stars for you. There might have been, again, something about divine timing. I strongly suggest you go and watch the full moon in the Aries picker card, which is about remembering who you are, okay? Because it's occurring the same day as this transit is occurring. So that makes it very connected. The messages are connected. Okay. Ooh, yin yang. Number 22, a master builder. This is a master builder. Uh, and with the message of a master builder, you were here and your heart wants you to hear this. Pile number two, you came here to build something in balance and in sacred union with your soul. There's something about your heart, mind coherence that is very important that creates a very strong field of attraction, that creates a lot of charisma. You might be someone that um, is able to generate a lot of income, a lot. But you know what? It's, it's, I feel with this energy that you're someone that when you do what is in alignment with you, you generate opportunities, abundance, income, job, job offers. Like you create a, a whole cascade of opportunity, not just for you, but a lot of other people. And that's why here I feel your heart wants you to learn and own this or learn this and master this as a part of yourself, as a part of something that is God-given. I'm here. And this is something that you may have known, but may have shunned away from because <laughs> those messages about remembering who you are, your true light. I feel that some of you were trying to dim your light. You were trying to maybe didn't want to go first or number two or didn't want to be in the spotlight. But there's something that your light holds. You know, it's almost like you know, sometimes like the people that don't want to be in that spotlight, they're the ones that are actually called to step in that light because uh, that's part also of their growth, not the things that come to you easily. I feel like this is something that was part of your path and your growth. And this transit is creating the space for it. Your heart is finally at a space where, yeah, this is it. You need to walk away from certain things. Some of you, it could be relationships. Again, and it doesn't have to be just romantic relation, things that didn't feel like it was working. And how would you know how things are working or not for you? It's if they're draining you. Things that are meant for you, they uplift you. They inspire you. You wake up in the morning and you just jump and you're like, I'm ready. I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to see this, those people. I can't wait to communicate with my team. I feel this is actually really important for you, pile number two. Maybe because there's so much water, you're highly sensitive, so you need to create an environment. And I think that maybe you're very aware of what type of environment helps you thrive and as a result, might be helping others to thrive as well because of your hypersensitivity, okay? Because all that water, I don't know how this happened. <laughs> pick that and then we have oh look at this of course anxiety that's what i said about this, this and i'm glad i didn't show you the card before so you see it's like in you feel this pile number two your heart wants you to honor how you feel how you feel in certain environments 
And if they don't bring you upliftment and excitement and also something that lasts. Because some of you, I feel like you have learned the capacity to boost yourself and bring that energy. But it could have drained you. So try to focus here. Your heart is saying things that are meant for you, they just naturally feel peaceful and calm and that might not be like super exciting like you know over stimulation but watch out the over over joy just follow the things that just brings you peace that brings comfort that brings a natural i feel like a more grounded rhythm with nature your true nature i feel this is important i do have a playlist that's called your true abundant nature that I feel that maybe could work for you. Pile number two, uh, if you are part of my YouTube um, membership at all levels, you will have access to all four different binaural beats. When you listen to all four, you're literally doing psycho, psychic surgery, healing, rebuilding and re-expanding of your aura. I've shared with everyone the two major ones which is checking the energy balance and doing the surgery okay and i have a lot of description and things that can help you but i feel that breath work especially with the anxiety can be something very important to your routine for you pile number two okay so that's part of your true abundant nature if you want to check it out i was shocked to read about those scientific data that literally said that this was doing psychic surgery i was like i can't believe science is finally at that level where they're you know merging this type of knowledge so i was really happy to find this and share it in some of my frequencies okay so pile number two once you acknowledge your hypersensitivity to your environment and that you want to create an environment that's more peaceful there's an expansion there's a type of leadership there's a type of magnetism uh, that is created so can we have some messages about this Ooh, okay oh wow three of cups again a lot of water energy and celebration i feel that some of you if you've been scared to take that leap of faith maybe working for yourself or quitting or leaving a place some of you with the walking away it could also be a physical move okay um you're going to see how much better you're going to feel it's going to be almost shocking to you how you did not realize how a certain environment and situation was draining you or bringing you anxiety Okay, so there's going to be a celebration for you, pile number two, uh, a celebration. Some of you, and I would say if you're leaving a place, you you might be even celebrated. Like, yes, good for you because you. I feel you're the type of person that wants to live in good terms, that always brought their best in those situations. So you're going to be celebrated for your decisions. Okay, wow, look at this. Ten of Cups, again, lots of water for you. You're going to find emotional fulfillment. With the Ace of Swords, you're going to find your truth. I'm hearing also your true, I was going to say it, it almost slipped out of my mouth, your true tribe, okay? Some of you, that might be something you want to look at. Pile number two, who is your soul tribe? Who is your soul tribe? Soul tribe. Might be something you want to look at. Uh, I will put it in the description box below. uh, All the things I recommend. There's a truth that's coming because you're, you're taking... I feel like what your heart wants you to do is take charge of what feels good to you. And trust that this will lead you exactly to everything that is meant for you. Creating a safe, peaceful space for your heart to have and honor its natural rhythm. I don't know why, but I'm picking it up that some of you, um, how do we call this? 
when you have an unstable heartbeat, it's a condition. So I'm sorry. I, I knew people that had this, but I never had that. So I don't remember the term. It's a little complex. Um, but a, like a flutter in the heart. Some of you, that could be a sign. When you feel that your heart just has like different pace, it's a sign of you being in an environment where you're not you're not comfortable. It might be draining you or you might feel, um, you know, when people are untrue. It could be that you also pick up on vibrational alignment through your heart space. This is something that I recently was became aware of is that you know like some people will have like their mind pick up very strongly on when people are misaligned it's like it they will say like you know their mind just like it doesn't make sense but some people they'll feel it more in their heart just like a, a natural uh lie detector not that people want to lie but sometimes they just lie to themselves so there's something with this pile, and again, I think it's because it has so much water that generates a lot of hypersensitivity that your heart wants you to harness. Leave the things that don't bring you peace. Peace is your greatest compass for you to recognize when you're in alignment with your true self. Peace. Knight of Wands. Some of you, there's just an expansion. This is going to create, this transit is going to create wonderful momentum forward for you. I'm going to mention it because I saw it. Uh, some of you, if there is a move, maybe you're going to be closer to mountains or mountains are very calming to you or just the forest. By the way, forest <laughs> is spelled for rest okay so some of you maybe going into nature is part of helping and supporting you to bring that expansion there's a leadership you're here to lead about certain things for certain things you're here to build certain things master builder number maybe a certain balance maybe a certain lifestyle that is in balance maybe being an example of this type of lifestyle Let's see. We have that. Wow. Look at this. You're going to be on your merry way with the judgment. And you know, the judgment card is, uh, the, is actually Pluto. And I told you, the Pluto reading is about calling in your soul tribe. I so freaking love this for you, pile uh, number two. Okay. Your heart is saying, you, when you're walking away about the thing, from the things, from the things, from the people that just bring you anxiety, that just brings you this, those weird feelings, you're going to shift in a whole different expanded version of your reality. You're calling on your tribe. You're uh, singing and going about life along your own personal tune. And that is beautiful because there's a lot of transformation here. Now, with this card came up. The hangman. Oh, it's interesting because I'm pulling it up right here. The hangman is actually Neptune. And in the reverse, that would be Neptune retrograde, which we're having right now, which is creating a lot of reviewing so we can end certain karmic cycles. So I feel that for you, this is occurring right now. We have two major planets that are showing that you are ending certain patterns that used to create those anxiety moments that maybe created those situation that now you're realizing you're able to walk away from okay um let's see if there's another message here i feel there's one card in this pile one card here what else whoa just oh there's two <laughs> we have the patience and the contract. Wow. So interesting. Some of you, this is, um, this is saying, first of all, I'm hearing different messages about good job on being patient with ending those karmic cycles. 
some of you, you had to go through this pattern, like here with this whole composition. You ha you're, you learned a lot from those situations where maybe you had to adjust your sensitivity, you had to mediate a lot, um, because that was part of certain karmic contracts, soul contracts that you needed to learn from. And the result is something great. It's giving you an upper hand on a certain mastery meant to build the life that is meant for you. Okay, so there's a certain mastery here that your heart is saying that you're ready to expand upon. If there is things that need to be let go of through this transit, remember October 17th to November 11th, know that this is going to um, be a celebration because greater things are meant to come in. And you've learned so much for this type of pattern. So those are the messages I have for you, my dear pile number two, from your heart. Okay. A great time for expansion. Some of you, if you need personal assistance or, you know, be part of our group for breath work and, and aligning to those energies, I have the link to the cosmic energy session for this. You'll be requested to be part of the Starseed Rise Up Soul Tribe. So if you have any questions, you can always email me. And that's all I have for you, my dear pile number two. I'm sending you many blessings, much love and light, and please remember to like those videos. Namaste. Hi, pile number three. You chose the door to personal healing and happiness. And let's see what messages from your heart are coming forward. I really strongly suggest your Venus placement for the zodiac um, signs just because of that full moon in Aries that is bringing so much remembrance of the true authentic self, the light that you are, who you came to be. At the same time, the same day as this Venus is entering Sagittarius. So again, choose according to your intuition, but I really feel that there were so many messages for this reading that this was the most accurate that you could get. So Let's see what we have for you first as messages from your heart. So your heart space, there's, um, you know, this feeling at this level of ascension that we're creating spaces and places within the body temple complex that we haven't freed before. It's really, it's so interesting to feel uh, you know, pile number three. It's it's a place that hasn't been ventured into yet. And for you, look at this. This is this is um, a moment of crowning. There's something that is going to be crowned. A desire that is going to be crowned. Um, I love this gold energy, which when you're working with Kundalini would be the masculine principle, the silver more of the feminine, the gold more of the masculine. And because it sits on the crown, there's some type of message here of self-mastery of the mind for you, pile number three. Maybe, ooh, well, <laughs> maybe in the past there was, um, you know, an imbalance between heart and mind for you. Okay, let's see. The realist, earth point person. Wow, this is a crossroad. This is a crossroad that you manifested. I would say it's a shift in quantum timelines. It's something that you manifested through your personal healing, through deepening your connection to your heart, to yourself, not being scared to venture within. And you saw that within there was this whole abundance that was waiting for you. Waiting with, I don't, I'm hearing the word pleasure and joy. Maybe in the past, you pile number three had, um, it feels maybe stuck in the hustle bustle type of energy and not being able to even, um, I'm not going to take those. Okay. 
All right, well, those. <laughs> it's interesting um, because I didn't take the first hand. I waited for the second, and the second just unraveled itself. So I feel that this is a message from your heart here, pile number three, that maybe you've, um, sometimes you've hold off certain opportunities that might have been looking all shiny from the outside, and yet a part of you was like, I don't think it's meant for me. I don't think maybe it could be in through relationship, work opportunities, maybe uh, an offer to move somewhere. Um, you've been patient. And I think here your heart is saying like, there is a reward that is coming with this Venus transiting Sagittarius. Sagittarius is an archetype that is a strong manifester. You know, it's towards the end of the wheel of the Zodiac. So there's a lot of lessons before achieving this attraction and manifestation um, as far as the wheel altogether. So there's something here that you're manifesting. It has to do, look at this. It has to do with your self-confidence. It has to do with your solar plexus. Now in the Zodiac wheel, number 37 is the karmic chain breaker. This is the first degrees in Libra where we're shifting from, you know, after six zodiac signs, we're shifting from the subconscious to the conscious, from the self to others, experiencing the world with others. So there's some shift here for you, pile number three, that is going to be huge in terms of your reality, how you're going to experience life itself. And look at this. I'm not surprised. Dear Tavalian, you're going to be entering a phase of great abundance. And again, we always think in this material expression of the matrix of money, but I feel that this is going to be much more than that. Something that feels even more satisfying, even though money is satisfying, in it, not in itself, but what it can bring. And for you, what I feel is that Community and angel of balance. There's probably a rebalancing of the scales of uh, your interaction, your sense of purpose in the whole, in whatever maybe community you're involved or whatever uh, group you're involved or whatever job you're involved or whatever creation you're involved in. There's a rebalancing of the scales. And I love this because I told you at the beginning, I felt maybe in the past, your mind was trying to become the master instead of being the servant, the servant to the heart, the heart as this connection energetically to your soul at the star uh, soul chakra and the earth star chakra. This is perfect fifth resonance. This is, uh, you know, sound engineering principles. We can recognize the simple principle when we listen to music. And it's so interesting because when you think about it, you are vibrating frequency. So you are a song. And there's something here that you're achieving through this transit that is leading you, that is crowning your desires, that is crowning especially your heart's desire and material desire to shift into a different timeline. Okay, let's see some more details. Can we have details about this timeline for pile number three? Oh, I feel there's something in the dice here. Okay. All right. Interesting. I love it. Okay. And it's, it, it's, it's interesting that it fell this way. Okay. So Taurus and 12th house, some of you, a Taurus is an archetype that needs to hold the light. It's a divine light holder. It needs to stay steadfast, patient, loving, and perseverant. With the 12th house, there's something maybe that you're addressing um, that could be a spiritual routine, that could be um, daily affirmations, uh, daily chanting. There's something you're doing, pile number three, and that the universe saying, keep doing this because with Jupiter, which is the wheel of fortune, you're attracting your tribe. You're attracting your perfect clients. You're attracting your perfect opportunities. Um, you know, the, the friends, the, the feeling of family, everything that you've wanted to manifest is attracted through 
what you've built for yourself as far as um, creating a balance of hard mind coherence. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, ooh, okay. You know what? <laughs> Pile number three. I'm so loving that this finally makes sense because when I was trying to get a question for this transit, there was so many in so many levels of information that I didn't know where to go with this. So I just went with the heart. And because some of the piles, it's very oriented also to love. And some of you with the lover's card, this is a double confirmation of the angel of balance here. Uh, you could be attracted the one if that's something that you're looking for. Now, some of you, if you're already in a committed relationship, this could take your relationship because it's expanded into the next level. You could get engaged. You could get, you know, um, married or you, you could just move in together. There's a next level of commitment. And I feel it's because you, you committed to yourself here. There's a high level of commitment that I feel for this high level of commitment to your healing. Okay. Oh, wow. And look, you have powerful major arcanas. <clears throat> okay. This is interesting. <laughs> okay. Because uh, the magician is Mercury. Mercury is connected to the throat when you work with your Kundalini, your life force. And you saw my throat went a little... <clears throat> so... We said here there's certain things about affirmation. I would strongly suggest to um, make sure that your throat chakra is clear. Some of you, if you're part of the YouTube tribe, uh, especially the star seed, but all levels, you could work with Mercury, okay? Because this is also a card that says Gemini. Gemini is connected. So a lot of throat, you, you need to continue um, claiming the things that you want to manifest, the things you believe you deserve, the things that resonate with your heart. And I also have um, a Mercury cosmic alignment, and I'll put it in the description box below for the ones that want to join us. I use tuning forks, I use acupressure points, stretches. I mean, everything I've learned <laughs> in my life as far as the healing modalities um, I'm, I'm, I'm including it. I'm going to music college, all my music sound. I'm like, I'm blown away by how I see it even in my clients, pile number three. And some of you, you might be one, well, some of them, um, how I'm seeing your growth and how it's just, um, it just makes me so happy. It makes me so happy to see this growth, this type of growth and expansion, because it comes first from the heart field. Okay, there's something else in the hands. Let me see. There we go. There's something here. Here, uh, Remember, there was like a second hand. Uh, you were, maybe you had to say no to certain things. You had to wait. You had to be patient with the Taurus here energy. Uh, maybe you were feeling stuck, but it's actually because you were shifting your auric vibrational field you had to address some more healing before things could get unlocked oh my god look at this the comet our life path oh i got chills wow 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 you know it's interesting because uh, that's not going to resonate for everyone but i need to mention it um when i I had, <laughs> as, an as a future astrologer on my path, I manifested a lot of uh, relationships that put the sun onto certain planets. I met someone that put the sun on my Jupiter. And I, I just need to tell you this story because it's just it's too obvious for me not to say it. Um, but I didn't know at the time that my Kali, the goddess Kali in my chart, was merged with my Jupiter. And when I met this person, I had this vision of a comet falling onto, <laughs> onto Earth, but it didn't go and explode anything. It actually went into me and exploded me. <laughs> and, and, and it was, you know, this, this opening up of removing all the energy obstacles Okay, so I feel as some of you, if you're part of the YouTube star um, membership, 
um, the goddess Kali has an additional message. But overall, you're opening up the doorway to your path, uh, to your destiny here. This is very strong, very, very strong. I would say if you want to work with a frequency, you could work with the beacon of light. I'm going to put it down, beacon of light for you. And some of you, again, if you have access to the membership, I would work with the web of destiny because you're literally shifting timelines. This is, this is huge. Pile number three, your heart is saying good job. It's saying like, I am loving. I'm loving the uh, focus that you've put on to my needs. My needs for love, appreciation, uh, my needs for also being heard. I feel like some of you, it could have been also in your relationship, something that you couldn't get from a partner. Look at this as a mirror effect. What were the things that you didn't feel you could get from your relationships? Were they like people that didn't know how to comfort you or didn't know how to, they couldn't, you felt that you weren't heard, that you weren't seen. This is what your heart was feeling. And whatever you've done so far, it's, it's your heart is saying like, thank you. It's saying thank you because we're shifting the timelines. We're shifting our attraction. We're feeling that we're on purpose, that we're opening up those doorways where we feel valued, where we feel that we're strong manifestors of our desires. So I love this for you, pile number three. This is what I have for you. If you enjoyed this reading, please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. <laughs> Namaste. Hi, pile number four. Welcome to the messages of your heart. Pick a card guidance for Venus transiting in Sagittarius. So the zodiac placement for this Venus transit, we have Taurus, Gemini, and Aquarius. I strongly suggest your Venus placement because of this strong activation of your light remembrance of remembering who you are this is part of the activation of this full moon in Aries and the card that came with it is the deceit card so there's something here that maybe we have to clarify there's definitely something I don't know if he's holding uh, cards but there is, there is some type of illusion because that kind of resonates a little bit with the devil card here. It feels, okay, from the outside. But remember, uh, through the illusion, you're also mustering a type of faith, fearlessness. So you know how to dissipate the fog of this illusion okay so let's see let's see the cards let's see what we have what hand what hand is there what messages your heart wants to share with you what messages from your heart here okay there's a lot in the hands so some of you there might be something that you're activating opening up your um, hand chakra oh wow i find it super interesting Okay, great. Um, because when I did the cosmic alignment session for this Venus transit, we're working for Sagittarius with the pericardium meridian, which is um, the muscle around the heart that helps it expand. Okay. And one of the point is in the middle of the wrist. And when we did this whole breath work and activation, the hands started to vibrate so much. You know, so there's something and that's why this could be cards, but this also could be chest. This could be a little chest with a little secret. And maybe there's certain fears that keep you from opening it or seeing it for what it is. Okay, so let's see. The benevolent one. Ooh, the Jupiter. Okay, so this is the finger. This is the finger for Jupiter. Some of you, I don't know, maybe you would benefit from wearing a ring on this finger if you're wearing rings. 
to get some of that information. But let's see. I feel there's another, there's another card. There's another card for you. Messages from the heart. Ooh, the wave. The wave. There's a wave of expansion. Could it be creating a little bit of fear or anxiety? Okay, pile number four. It seems that this activation of Venus entering in Sagittarius, because it's happening at the same time <clears throat> as the full moon in Aries, there's some type of wave that is asking you to expand, expand yourself, expand your reach, expand what is possible for you to create. The, the, there seems to be some illusion or fears or things that are deceitful. Okay, all right, let's see. What are those things? The thinking man, the financial constraint, I felt called to reorganize things. The victory and the action. Okay. Pile number four. I feel that right now you're receiving, and it could be in your subconscious, okay? Because the number 46 in the zodiac is related to Scorpio. Some of you, you could have a certain placement in Scorpio that is being activated and that's pushing you uh, towards a certain expansion, towards a certain transcendence of limiting beliefs. There's a shift that wants to occur for you to bring more abundance, but I don't know what you're not seeing about yourself. There's something Let's see if we can get clarification. What is this limiting belief that, that pile number four needs to transcend? Can we get some details about this limiting belief? Because that's, you know, that's exactly what the devil or deceit card would be. It's like making you feel like you're smaller, that you can't do something. Because there's a call to action. It seems that the, the, the cosmos is pushing you towards a certain direction, but this could be in the way of your victory. This card was reversed, but because I know it, we're going to work through this. We're going to work through this energy block. Oh, wow, the sun. Okay, so there's a certain... The sun is the third eye, and it's the front of your third eye. It's your perception perception of who you are Ooh, wow you definitely need to uh, listen to the reading for the full moon in Aries okay this is this is this is something you'll find in the description box you'll uh, see it in pile number one this reading pick a card there's something about your perception of yourself that you need to remember with the the crystals here crystals hold matrices here he holds a lot of them they could have been you know what i'm feeling this is so weird but i have to say it some of you it's past karmic loop and that means i would suggest strongly to look at um scorpio or if house placement in your chart and see if you have any planet here and this is the planet that holds some of the information some of you if it's not related to this, this is related to retrograde planets. Okay, there's something as far as past karmic lessons um, that, you know, things that you did not fully grasp in a past lifetime. This is when we're born with retrogrades. It's like an unfinished chapter. It's not bringing you more karma if you have more retrograde planets. It's just at the soul level, you knew that forgetting 
this particular insight or particular victory, you needed to leave those little uh, unfinished chapters. Okay, I I don't know if I explain it properly, but this is at a soul level it makes sense. <laughs> We're a complex being. What can I say? Ooh, the King of Pentacles. This is interesting because I really feel, I was going to say I feel Taurus energy. Um, what I'm going to suggest, because I felt it, some of you um, look at your Uranus placement, because right now we have the, the seven sisters, the Pleiades, that are dancing with Uranus retrograde. So some of you, there might be something, Uranus is the master teacher of evolution, your growth. This is also the fool card. This is the card of opportunities. So there's something here, maybe that you didn't feel you were ready to create or missed out on certain opportunities that we need to heal that feeling. There's a certain, there's a certain repetition here. Maybe seeing the glass half full versus, um, well, yeah, we want to see it half full and says versus half empty. Or can I have my cake and eat it too? There's something about choices here. Even with the action, with duality, there's something about uh, thinking that if I choose this path, then this can't happen. A little bit like if I choose to be successful, then I won't be happy or I won't have the family you know there's there's something here what I'm going to suggest for you pile number four is to attune to the Pleiades Pleiades will help you attune to a higher sense of love a higher uh, perception of what's possible and maybe help you end certain karmic loop here yeah okay let's see what else so once we attune to the support of the stars, because I feel like you're very connected to the stars, especially here with the crown activation. Your, your connection, maybe some of you, you have a lot of Taurus placements. Some of you, you might be very connected to Pleiades. Right now, you're receiving a boost of support from this, um, this whole star cluster to transcend a certain illusion, to transcend a certain fear, to transcend a certain limitation, put the light on this, give it space, give it breath, so it can, you know, when you actually put the light on something that is hidden to you or that feels fearful, you're giving it oxygen. So if it's, if it's like it is an illusion, it dissipates. It's not going to be there anymore. Some of you doing breath work, uh, you might also benefit from working with colors. You might be uh, someone that likes colors uh, that you bring into your chakra. There's an alignment here. Whoa, okay. But you have a lot that wants to come forward. Look at this. We have the world. <sighs> Once you attune to this frequency, you're changing your field of attraction. You're changing what is possible to you. Some of you, I feel that maybe you were locked in a karmic pattern. This is going to open up the gateway. There's, there's, there, you see here, there's a constriction. And constriction means that there's a need to bring more light, more space, more breath, more movement. Some of you, it could be also through stretches. Mm-hmm. Then you have the Six of Cups, beautiful. The Three of Cups and the Seven of Pentacles. You know what I feel for you, pile number four? That there's an opening to a certain heart's desire. Something you've been maybe wanting for a long time and through your experience, you believe that maybe you couldn't have it, okay? And I don't know what that experience was, but it, it is something that your heart at this point doesn't want you to limit. It says you can have, 
your cake and eat it too. You can create the world that you've always dreamed of, it's especially the Six of Cups is a card of the past, of nostalgia about, you know, childhood memories. You can, you know, celebrate, have celebration. Maybe some of you, it's a reunion with family or people that feel like family. And here, what is interesting is, Again, the Seven of Pentacles in the Zodiac is Taurus energy. There's a lot of Taurus. And Taurus, as a Zodiac light worker, as an archetype, it needs to hold the light. And it holds the light. What does that mean? You hold the light in your hands. You hold the light in your aura. You hold the light through your values. You hold the light through your beliefs. So there's a request here to almost work with gratitude, but work on the beliefs that are true to you. What do you resonate as a vibrational belief? Is it kindness? Is it compassion? And obviously you don't need to have just one word. Um, is it, you know... Uh, health. There, there's, there's a certain claim here from the heart in terms of your value, in terms of the things that are valuable to you, that you wouldn't compromise. And from that field, there's an opening up. You're literally here, I would say for some of you, this could feel very uncomfortable uh, as a full moon because this is happening with the full moon and your heart is like really being called to like expand, expand and, and explode some of the past restrictions. There's definitely past uh, dynamic. Maybe some of you, it's like what you experienced as a child, uh, things that you miss, maybe uh, a happy family dynamic things that you also maybe values that you were raised and born with. That's something that is true to your heart and your heart wants you to focus on this. Now, once you focus on your heart's value, okay, on what those things mean to you, what else does the heart want to tell you? Wow, this was a flyer. Okay, so there's going to be a cleanse. There's going, you know, storms are not bad. They're actually cleaning. Some of you, I feel, look at this. The old structures, they're going to fall down. The old structures that may have made you feel trapped or limited, they're going to fall apart. Okay, so once, wow, <laughs> once they fall apart, look at this. Caring connections. I feel here this pile, pile number four, um, Venus is connecting in your heart space really cares about connection. It could be that you have like a lot of, you know, um, things in your chart that talk about connecting with others. You could have six house energy, 11th house, 12th house, fourth house. I'm seeing a lot. Of, it's something in your chart that really wants to Create the space for more caring, loving celebration. Um, and in the past, there was something that you held as true that limited this, this uh, wave. Okay. But the great news is that the scales with Libra, the scales are shifting. You have also Gemini. Look at this. That's duality. You're transcending a certain duality. You're holding more of the focus your focus on the things that you want to see manifest. And that is shifting everything. That is shifting everything. Everything. I keep on hearing everything. Everything will shift with your focus. Put your life force, life force towards the things you want, towards the things you value. Every time you think more about something that worries you or you have doubt, reshift to the things you want to see manifest. Just shift it. Because I feel as some of you, it might be just a, a habit, like almost like a, a loop that was created through a certain experience. 
Okay, pile number four, that's what I have for you. I trust this is supporting you. Those are messages from your heart. I love how it ended because they're just a beautiful uh, union. If you wanted to manifest some, you know, caring, loving relationship, this is definitely something from this transit that is going to lead you there. Um, yeah, that's all for you, pile number four. I trust this supported you. And if it did, please give it a thumbs up. It supports in return the channel to grow. Namaste.